let's start at the beginning. So, uh, the thing about Marvel that you should know first and fo foremost is that you can only do it if you thank people like Gimme Your Torta. Yeah, thanks for the subscription. It came up a little late, but thanks very much. Uh, the thing about Marvel, probably the most important thing is movement. Okay. That's probably one of the most important things. So yeah, you, you know how to wave dash, but what you didn't know nope. is that you could wave dash backwards. Nope. Wait, how do you do backwards? You do the same, like yeah. So oh. you do you do down back, right? And every character's wave dash will have a different oh, rhythm. Yeah. A lot of characters oh. will have... So a character like Ryu will be different than a character like Iron Man. So if you look at... Just stop wave dashing for a second. If you look at Iron Man's back dash Ooh, and forward dude. dash, right? And then you compare it to Ryu's. Ryu's like forward dash and back dash. It's a little different, right? Like Ryu travels a similar distance backwards, but Iron Man goes way further forward. Iron Man, he is like a continuous one, though, right? Like he can just keep going. No, it stops. Wait, what? Hold on. Wait. Yeah. Back up. It goes hella far. Oh, you're you're holding forward, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. to make it go a little further. Yeah, during the dash, but is that like for all the characters or just Iron Man? Uh, no, it depends on the character. Ryu. So like Ryu, for instance, Ryu cannot. Yeah, he's going about half screen with his dash, right? So he doesn't quite carry it as far and the yeah. subscribers are who carry my channel people like Ich ichigeki one thanks for the subscription that's very kind of you uh so yeah movement is probably one of the most important things so in a game like marvel it feels a little weird to a lot of people but you can uh dash with attacks with buttons and the most common way you're gonna see that is with the two punch buttons i think i don't think you can wave dash with the kicks in this game right it has to be the punch uh so yeah you wave dash with the punches in this game uh, so that's something important to keep in mind. Now, you can also do that if your character has an air dash. You can use the punches to dash in the air, mm -hmm. right? That's important to keep in mind. Um, in all directions too, right? It depends on the character. Uh, so if someone like Iron Man has a eight-way air dash, you can air dash in any of the eight directions that you can pick on your arcade stick. But a character like Dante has a box dash. You can only go forward or back. Okay. Uh, so that's something that, you know, you have to keep in mind. Some characters have double jumps. Some characters uh, only have one jump, some characters have flies, some characters have all kinds of different mobility options, right? So it depends on who you are. A character like Ryu, he's just an ordinary guy. He's so boring in that sense. He's an ordinary guy. That, this is what he's got. He's got, he's got air tattoos. And they go in two directions now. Though. Yeah, they do. Uh, we'll get into that in a second. So that's why movement is important. You didn't know that you could wave dash backwards, but right. uh, the way to wave dash is by canceling your dash with down, is what most people use to wave dash. And that works forward or backwards and it's sort of like Tekken in the sense that when you first start you'll be very slow and you'll accidentally do stuff like yeah. that a lot you'll get accidental <laughs> buttons or attacks right yeah. but as you play you'll become more and more comfortable with the speed of wave dashing and that's how you move around same kind of thing like when you switch characters each character's wave dash actually feels a little different so it's one of those things where it's gonna take you time to sort of get used to wave dashing around it's funny to me that seems like melee what the speed of the wave? No, it's not a for a character. Oh yeah, it's it's definitely something that you have to get used to, right? Where it's like it's like not every character feels the same. For instance, with Dante, I feel like his wave dash back is super natural to my hands, mm -hmm. but his wave dash forward, I find myself having to slow my wave dash down a little bit. Whoa. But when I play another character, I'll be like, oh yeah, I gotta I can wave dash like the speed I want to wave dash, right? So it depends on who you're playing. Uh, so that's probably the basics about movement. There is a super jump. Uh, which is down up, just like a super jump is done in most games, and you can do it in any direction. So you can do attacks out of it. Um, the interesting thing about super jumping is stay on the ground. If I super jump, my attacks will auto correct. If I do a regular oh, jump, you can see that they will go over like that. I didn't know that. If I super jump, my character will turn around. Now that is important, but it's not as important as the next thing I'll show you. So stay still. The other thing that you can do with a super jump is as you super jump, if you hold down, you'll do like a super jump hop. Right? See that? Now, the good thing about a super jump hop is that it still retains the properties. Stop it. Stop moving. Yeah. It still retains the properties of a super jump where your character will turn around. Which means you can do stuff like that, and your character will actually turn around in the air and do your like attack. Not doing. Got it. He's not there it is. Yeah. So you can actually <laughs> Yeah, you can actually turn your character around and he'll do the attack on the on the proper side. Yeah, those are sort of the basics of moving, and I think that that short hop move is particularly effective for lots of characters who traditionally would struggle to get in because maybe their ground movement is not as good. Uh, I think that that's something that's very useful. And I think that in the future, it'll be very strong for stuff like the uh, cross-up jump normals and stuff like that, especially with characters with an air dash. 
Um, so that's kind of the basics of movement. Mm -hmm. um, and your character, whoever you play, might have different movement options than the characters that we picked. So just keep in mind and kind of mess with them and see if see if they have something. Universally, also to keep in mind, flies are uh, quarter circle back and then two kicks. That's how you do it. So quarter circle back, two kick is the flight. Uh, so if you're wondering if your character has a fly, you can check just like that. Uh, anyway, so we talked about the universal input. Yeah, yeah. From everybody that I've seen that has a fly, that's been the input. The other thing that we should talk about is the attack buttons. This game has changed from Marvel 3 in a lot of ways. So there is a light punch, heavy punch, light kick, heavy kick. So four main attack buttons that you're going to be using. Uh, and universally, down plus heavy punch is a launcher. Right, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Down plus heavy punch is your launcher. Mm -hmm. uh, and so a lot of times the target chain, you're gonna use the magic series, right? The magic series is a common term they use in Marvel. Right. For the main string series that you're gonna use when you're <laughs> fighting people, is light punch, light kick, uh, and then either heavy punch in the launcher or like heavy kick in the launcher, right? right? Either one is fine. But yeah, most people, you're gonna see a chain like that, right? So light punch, light kick, uh, heavy punch, heavy kick, launcher is a really common chain, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and then after that, once you put your opponent in the air, it's basically the same magic series. Uh, a lot of characters, it'll depend on your character. Some characters, their heavy punch in the air will spike your opponents down, so if you jump real quick. My heavy punch, as you can see with Ryu, it doesn't spike you down, but my heavy kick will knock you to the floor. So if you want to do a combo, let's say I have you near the corner here. The magic series again, the light punch, light kick, heavy punch, launcher. Uh, I'll do the same thing in the air, except for at the end, instead of doing heavy punch, I'll do heavy kick. So, and I'll spike you back to the ground. Very basic combo, right? Uh, and you can sort of repeat that to get like an additional combo. So let's say I spike you up in the air, I kick you back down, and right there I can juggle. I can't get out of that? Uh, no, there's no, there's no, uh, it's all one combo. And I can pick you back up, yeah. and then do the rest of my combo, right? Holy ball. wait, how did you pick me up again? What did you use? So, with most characters that I found, the universal OTG is crouching light kick or heavy kick. Okay. And it'll pick you up off the ground. Uh, if you want to test what it is, the easy way to do it is to kind of like knock your opponent down and then try to pick them up with something. So what I do to do that is anytime I spike them down, I tried crouching light kick. And then uh, I would try crushing heavy kick. And both of them work, right? So that's usually what I use when I spike people to the ground. And then just do it again. And then spike them back to the ground, right? It's like a double spike, you can't obviously pick up again, right? Right. There's a limit. Yeah. So with one character at least. So that's like the first kind of air ground air to ground combo that most people will do. And you can see even the damage on it, it's not like it doesn't it's not like it does bad damage, right? Right? It's like a decent amount of life, no bar, no other character. It's basic magic series combo. So when you OT gear there, you're getting like whatever the, the OTG button is, and then you hit yeah. the launcher again. With I the mean, crouching fierce button. I guess to be fair, calling an OTG calling it an OTG is not proper since it's like a bounce. We should probably clarify. Okay. Like it's just it's a ground bounce. Okay, so ground bounce, pick up win, with the crouching kick. Yeah. And then relaunch crouching spears? Yeah. Okay. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, if you do know what you're doing, you can do like a heavy punch and then do another one or something like that, or even just like a raw launcher and do the same thing again. But I think the most easy way to do it is to do like a light attack, so that way you don't miss it. Right, so a light attack so that you have the most amount of time. Yeah, this may sound really stupid, but you know, coming from Street Fighter V to this, combos are way harder. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I, I believe it. No, it is. Especially because the way the characters function is just so light. It's like unique. Each character has their own like special moves and way that their change works. So Iron Man, for instance. Um, with Iron Man, I can actually spike him back down with my heavy punch. But it's because with Iron Man, he has jumping heavy punch, jumping down heavy punch, jumping up heavy punch. Whoa. Angled. He has angled. Yeah, he has angled heavy punch. So, yeah, with Iron Man, I can actually do something like... And then pick him up again, and then do the same combo with so you my... You fierce and then down fierce to spike? Yeah. Ah, so the regular fierce in the air doesn't spike, but down fierce in the air does. Right, exactly. And that means that you can do stuff like that, just a normal magic series combo. So a very simple, kind of basic way to do air combos. And it doesn't matter what character you're playing, right? Um, so that's sort of how it goes. With 
Iron Man, for instance, uh, you can also kick them down with your kick. It also does the spike. But to be honest, you know, either one is fine. And with your character, it'll be different. We're showing Ryu and Iron Man, but maybe you're playing like Dante and you're like, oh, I have to use this button, right? So just sitting there and kind of figuring them, that out is a good way to um, kind of like test the waters of that. So that's the basic magic series. Do you have that down? So uh, even for a beginner, I think that when you land a combo mid-screen, something like this will happen, right? Where you knock them down and you're like, how do I do that, right? Like, how do I pick up that kind of a combo? Right. So uh, let me jump over you. So for a lot of beginners, you might even find it easier to, instead of doing something like that, just use your second character. Okay. To do the combo for you. Because when your character runs in, they cover the distance. So something like, instead of doing spiking them and then being like, oh, I can't hit them, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, when you spike your opponent to the floor, the hit tag, and your other character will run in right there, and then that allows you to relaunch the same kind of way you would with that character. So spike them, reuse right there, and I could do my combo again, right? So that's like if you struggle, yeah, if you struggle to do the normal magic series, you can sort of use both your characters to help you out and get like an easier version. All right, here's how you do it with one character. So the key to having the most amount of time to dash up. So if I do this, right, like dashing up is really hard right there. Right. But you want to hit your opponent with the move that spikes them back to the ground as late as possible. Okay. So you want to do it while your character is coming down so that you have the most amount of height. So look at the difference between this. Like to see how long it takes for Ryu to hit the floor as opposed to something like this. So I'm using that extra time by delaying my air combo to get up there and do the combo, right? So that's kind of the idea behind it. Instead of having to do something like that, where Iron Man would have to come in and get the job done, I can just do it with Ryu instead, solo, by delaying my air attack. And then I can use Iron Man at the end of that if I want, right? So I can do something like that. Main right. thing is using the magic series to do two things. The first one is to do a combo with your character alone. Something very simple like that. The second is using your other character, right? So doing something like this. And then tagging in Iron Man. And then doing that combo. So that's the most basic combo that you're going to do in Marvel, right? So something like that, pick them up, spike them down, right? Very simple. It might take you a little bit to get, but once you understand that, it's gonna work with like every character in the game, basically. Yeah. Uh, and it's gonna be effective. And even something as simple as like, if you wanna add a super move to it, then that's no problem, right? Because with Ryu, I would do something like that, and then shoot Shenku at the end, and it's just, you know, one extra input, basically, is how it works. And same kind of thing with Iron Man, right? Where if I want to add something onto my combo, I'm doing my little repulse array and then doing my super at the end or whatever, right? So it's like, it's the same kind of thing where you're just doing one little step to add in extra damage. Right. And like that's at the most basic Generally, basically. like a special move into a, a hyper? Yeah, generally you want to do a special move hyper. With Ryu, for instance, we're doing Tatsu. Right. And then canceling that into... Uh, okay. So that's kind of like an easy way to do it. What's next? Uh, so that's the basic attack buttons, right? That's the movement, which are probably two of the most important things in the game to cover. Uh, but after that, you probably want to start looking at tagging. Uh, and I think tagging is something that universally is gonna you're going to find very useful. Uh, and we did it in our combo already. We kind of already showed how characters can work together, right? By spiking somebody down, tagging in, and then doing my combo, and like all that kind of stuff, right? All of that is great. But you want to start using your tagging on moves in neutral. Now, my advice is to focus on a few things. There's maybe like two or three things that every character in the game will universally have. Okay. The first one is a projectile. So a projectile, uh, it can be anything, right? So for Ryu, it's something like a fireball, right? Uh, just a projectile that's gonna go across the screen and force your opponent to block. Something like that is great to tag, uh, and you know, it just gives you time. So I can come in with Iron Man and I can start to do mix-ups, right? I can cross you up, I can stay in the front, I can do whatever, but it's off of something like a fireball, right? So I can do mix-ups off of it and force your opponent to sort of block, yeah. So when I 
did that advancing guard that are reflecting back the projectile, I could still guard. It doesn't put me into like blocks an attacking thing. No, you actually like instantly recover yeah. from blocks them. Uh, it's how you escape some projectile chip setup. So what he's doing there is certain projectiles, uh, majority of projectiles in mm -hmm. fact, if you block them and push block at the proper time, you can reflect them. So uh, a push block is done by doing your two punch buttons, and as you can see, you can shoot your projectile back at me. And the cool thing about that is, is that if Rip has the timing, he can actually dash up and then combo after it. Because the fireball will hit me, and then yeah, he could like do something like that. Even even do something like your own beam after. Just do your beam. So if, if I'm yeah, if I'm trying to walk up and behind my projectile. Rip can kind of like win the zoning war by doing that. Huh. And then you could tag your beam and run up with oh, Ryu yeah, and yeah, get a combo. <laughs> and like, yeah, there's a lot to it. This game has, there's a lot going on that you, you, you have to think about for sure. Uh, it's also useful in other things. So if, we showed it earlier, but if Rip is attacking me, uh, I can push him away and create space, right? And that allows me, if I'm a character like Iron Man, who's going to want to like zone, right? I can like use that to run away. So I can push block him and then I can run back here. And now I'm back at full screen. Oh boy. Right? So you see, that's why push blocking is a really effective tool. So I can just create space and now I'm, I'm chilling. But anyway. Uh, Advancing guard during a uh, super. Really much, huh? it, re it reduces mm. the amount of chip you take. Oh, wow. So that's super important. Yeah. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So, so you were talking about the mix ups, though, right? So yeah. tagging for mix ups, at least. Right, so the three main ways are mm -hmm. probably going to be off of a projectile. Right. Uh, and projectiles are great because, uh, let's say I have Iron Man out, he has something like Unibeam, and that takes a while, and then I can jump in and now I'm in there, right? I can fight, I can get up close and fight. Uh, same thing with Ryu, I can throw this fireball, and now I can get in oh, and start God, I don't fighting. Like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you made me panic. I can get in and start fighting my opponent, and it's great. And you know, I'm fighting with my landlord over my rent, and people like, uh, what is your name? Redui. Redui. Subscribing for four ninety nine. Help that out. Thanks very much. I'm not actually fighting my landlord, but it was a good segue. So yeah, that's that's kind of the main example. The first one. Most characters in the game have a projectile. Stop moving. Most characters in the game have a projectile. It's okay. it's distracting for the viewer at home trying to learn. Most characters. Stop it. Not even that. No. Okay. Most characters in the game have a projectile that allows you to move in behind it when you attack. That's probably like the level one. Okay. The level two, and the other thing that you can do, maybe your character doesn't have a projectile. Okay. But maybe they have a super or an attack that lasts a long time, creates a lot of blocks stun mm -hmm. that allows you to move in behind it. Now, with Ryu, uh, a good example of that is actually a projectile super. Sure. Right? So something like Shinku, and even if Rip blocks it, if I tag into Iron Man, I can start to mix them up. I can go, you know, I can air dash around a bunch. I can go low. I can go overhead, right? And he has to block during the whole super animation. That's what's so good about something like a lockdown super. I can oh, mix up rip by jumping in around. And, and Iron Man has the same kind of thing, right? Unibeam. And then I can go in with Ryu, go low, go overhead, right? And that kind of stuff is really effective. Uh, the other thing is a universal overhead or low option that your character has. So Ryu has a good example. If you low block, Ryu has an overhead. Mm -hmm. And now, Ryu's overhead, as you can see, I'm trying to cancel into special moves. I'm trying to do other attacks off of it. I can't do anything. But if I tag, I can actually do a combo. Off of it, right? Yeah, but I mean, a full combo off of that without having to spend the bars. Yeah, no, you're right. That's something that, that's useful to think. Now, on the other hand, if Ryu, let's say you think I'm going to go overhead. So you stand block. I can just go low and then turn it into a full combo. Or I can even, like, if I want to do the mix up, I can go low, fireball, and suddenly I have a mix up between overhead and low. Right? Because you were going to tag anyway. I was going to tag anyway. And you can even do it if your character has an air dash like Iron Man. You can do something like this air dash overhead, right? And I can go low at the same time as the air dash. So you can create a mix up with one character, you know, doing an attack that you told them to do overhead and low at the same time <laughs> your face is the best part about that so yeah you can do something that's an overhead and a low at the same time and even something with Ryu like Tatsu like that to kind of fake you out and make you stand block like it's pretty good yeah it's, ve it's very tough to block both oh my fierce miss but it's very tough to, to block both at the same time oh man then you're, oh. you want to stand block because Ryu's in the air so those are good examples right uh, air dashes or air moves projectiles or anything that locks you down for a long time. Those are all good examples of uh, just moves that are great for tagging. Those are the three main ones. So if you think your character doesn't have any of those things, mm -hmm. there's no chance that they don't have <laughs> one of them. They right. probably have at least two, 
if not three. All right, so let, let me let me run this back. So projectile, uh, extended block spring thing, like a like a hyper. Yes. Or what's the third one? Air dash, an air, air move, dash. or an air attack. And air the thing is, is that uh, when you mention the lockdown move, it doesn't even have to be a hyper necessarily. So if I'm playing Ryu, I could do something like Tatsu. And while you're forced to block the Tatsu, I can start to mix you up, right? I can do mix ups. So and there's a never a, a jumping cross up in the corner in this game. No, not that I could tell. The only thing that will cross up is Time Stone. Oh, okay. Yeah, Time Stone will teleport two, through you. But yeah, you, you can't. I can't jump past Rip here and go behind him. You yeah. see that? I'm just holding back. And he's never getting over it. There's six stones in the game, and they all do their own thing. Uh, as a beginner, there's two stones that I would recommend. The first is either pow power or reality. Power Those are the two stones I think are the simplest to use. Reality is the one with the red ball. Yes, we'll get into reality next. We're gonna run through all the stones sure. very quickly. But I think power is great because power, power is just a bounce. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great move because if I'm scared that Rip is gonna attack me, I can just kind of power stick out a power stone, right? It has, it has some startup. It takes a while to activate, oh but it's great because it just kind of activates and then you get a combo off. So if I hit it, I can be like, oh, and then dash up and do my combo, right? So that's the great thing about it. You can also insert it into combos that are already going on. So if I do, you know, this whole combo with Ryu and Spike into Iron Man or whatever, oh, I should actually have Spike in a second. But if I'm doing something like that and I Spike him, I can cancel into my Power Stone and get a combo. So with Ryu, even if you do something like Donkey Kick, you can Power Stone. And then I could have super or something like that. So it gives you combo extensions where you might not normally have. One right? per combo. Uh, yes. So Power Stone is a bounce, a wall bounce. So since Donkey Kick is also a wall bounce, yeah. And right? use up your wall bounce for the combo. Right. So you lose your, your power, stone, uh, your wall bounce. But you know, while you're spinning backwards like that, if I can kick you with this and then I Power Stone you, uh, the nice part about it is that. I can still do something like a hyper and get my combo. So power stone, kick him. It's pretty nice, right? All right, so power stone to the launcher. Yeah, and activation for the power stone. Now to activate the power stone, uh, universally, it's you hit your tag button plus your stone button at the same time. Yeah. What are they actually called? They're called Infinity Storm. Storm and another one's a surge. Surge. Yeah. So stone surge is the attack. Yeah. Storm is the storm. Now the thing about the storm is that it makes you first of all do a ton of damage. Uh, the second thing is, is it gives you extra ground and uh, wall bounces. So it kind of lets you fight against the rule that we saw earlier about wall bounces, right? So like all your attacks will bounce like uh, like over and over. So if I do something like a fierce attack, keeps on happening over and over. That's a different one. I can't like. And then I just do like a super again. So, and, and even something simple like if I turn on the attack data, uh, I'll show you guys. If I show on, turn on the attack data, let's just say a spike. That does 2,700 damage. Mm -hmm. If I have my power stone on, it does 3,601 damage. And you see that the way that he fell is like you can just keep combo. So you can even just do something like, and then. Oh, Spike him and then keep up wow, the combo. That you see the way he bounces? Is crazy. Also, check it out off the throw. So this is like his normal throw, right? Uh-huh. When I'm in Power Stone, he gets fucking tossed. Look at that. <laughs> Yo, language, bro. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> that's how that's just how powerful it is. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's wild. And everything is like that too. It's like everything is just over the top. It's like you send him into space. When you're, yeah, you see the way he bounces? Yeah, boom. He hits the deck and he bounces into the air. I'm pretty sure I can just, well, I mean, that obviously you can do whatever, yeah. but I think I can actually dash up and combo after. I bet you could. But it yeah. Looks like it's so high. Yeah, that's what Power Stone does. So the activation, wall bounce, you can do it in the air also. Mm -hmm. You know what's cool about it too is that you can make it cross up. So if I jump over you and then do it, it'll go the other way. Power Stone! Power Stone! What do you mean, like the short hop? What do you call it? What do you call that hop? Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, so it, that's actually a really strong, really strong mix of everything. And not only that, but this is true for all stone activations. Mm -hmm. They're tag cancelable. So if I'm playing Iron Man and I do something like this cross up like that, I can always tag out. I can't even attack! Yeah. I was matching Jad the whole time. <laughs> That's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> You're stuck? You can! 
That's actually a lot. That's a ton of blocks. Yeah, tagging is a lot of... Uh, tagging any move really creates a ton of blocks. Yeah. Wow, that's so weird. Yeah, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, um, that is the Power Stone, and that's how the Power Stone works. So, we can go on to the next stone now. Uh, we'll go to Reality. This is, as I mentioned, I feel like the probably easiest alongside Power Stones. So, Reality Activation is a homing projectile. So, even if you jump in the air, it'll chase you around. Now, notice that I can't do another projectile until the first one's gone. You can't do any... I can't do a second Reality. Oh, I see. But I'm not, I'm not talking about any other projectile. No, I'm I can I can shoot other projectiles. But if I tag my reality, I can shoot another one with my second. What? Character. Yeah, so I can have two out on the same time if I tag the first one, and that's two projectiles. And then both home, both home and projectiles. And the thing is, they have a ton of hit stuns. So even if I do it and you somehow hit me, like if I'm over here and I do it and you hit me, there's a ton of yeah. As you can see, the hit stun is crazy. Hit <laughs> Hey. <laughs> It's still there to protect me. It's a homing, since it's homing, it, it takes forever. So I think reality is probably the easiest one to use. Um, you can shoot it in the air as well from whatever height you want. You can tag cancel it to another one, and you have two reality stones on the screen. It's great. Dang, I tried to buffer it to tag really fast. You're magic. All right. So the storm, what you got to right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to let them see it. All right, so the storm. When you hit life attacks, life punch, it shoots a projectile. All right? <laughs> When you shoot me, uh, Heavy Punch, it shoots a Fire Beam. Ah, now the interesting thing about the Fire Beam is that it will be wherever I am on the screen. So you can see I can shoot the Fire Beam up there. Uh, heavy Kick will shoot a Pillar out of the air. So if I hit my Heavy Kick, it's a horizontal Pillar. So I can do both, and then I can shoot a, I can shoot Fire like that, or I can shoot that. Right? So I have ways to cover different options. If you're just jumping up in the corner to like avoid my stuff, then yeah. And the pillar is wherever I'm at, always? Yeah, it's a homing pillar. But you can jump forward and avoid it, right? It's just like the reality stone where it homes, but not enough that you can't avoid it. Right? Uh, the light kick, which we didn't talk about, is ice on the ground. If you get hit by the ice, it freezes you. And you can yeah, you can combo off it. You can see there's a long hit stun, right? Uh, so if I do the kick, you get hit by it? It's a long time. Yeah, you have a long time to run up and get a combo. So that is Reality Stone. I think this, the activation, is one of the easiest to use in the game, and I think it's very effective. Mm -hmm. If your character doesn't have a projectile, it gives you a way to get in behind it. Yep. You can shoot your projectile and then dash up behind it and like you know try to get offense. Yeah, you were talking you... about just tagging with projectiles earlier. Right. right? So yeah, so even if your character it. doesn't have a, t a fireball, mm -hmm. you pick Reality Stone, and now I have a fireball yeah. that I can tag. Right? Pretty good. Uh, and if your character has a zoner already, it's special cancelable, so you can do stuff like that. And then you can have zoning behind it. So my rocket plus my reality stone plus my unibeam plus my smart mind into my everything. You just start shooting all the projectiles on screen and you can cover everything. Oh, so they only have one uh, projectile point too. Yes, one hit of their ability. So shoot a fireball. Yeah. Okay, so it does count. All right, okay. Oh, so it just counts as a projectile except it's homing. Right. Got it. It's very strong. I think it's one of the, the easiest stones to use too. Mm -hmm. uh, next is soul stone. Uh, Soul Stone is really interesting. I think it's one of the more fun stones to mess with. So it's a very far-reaching uh, attack, as you can see. It goes almost full screen. See that? That's crazy. Almost full screen. Now, uh, the interesting thing about this, if I take my, our health down to 50%, I'll take my health down to 50%. If I hit you with it, it steals life from you and gives it to me. Cheating. So, this is actually very effective if you can find a move that lasts a long time. So just get hit by this and check out, check out Iron Man's health. So if I do something like this, and during that hyper, I hit you with Soul Stone, I can actually heal myself. Yeah, so three like three. How many? So like, it looks like five to ten percent or something per Soul Stone. Yeah, and the longer the hyper move is, the more chance you get, right? But also, uh, throw a projectile on me. I can punish it with stuff like that, and I can get, I can use that to get life back. I can even tag it. Projectile. I can tag it and then prevent my character from getting hit. So I can do something like that. And then like jump and punish you for it. It's, it's definitely an effective way to use the stone. It gives you life back. I think there's going to be a lot of people who come up with really strong teams that utilize long attacks that allow you to heal, 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 heal. Um, the activation really for cheap. Soul Stone will bring out both your characters on the screen uh, and let them fight. But what it really does is revive the character. 
Right. So if my let's say I uh, turn my let's slob, say Ryu dies, right? Mm -hmm. Say that Ryu has 10% life and you hit Ryu. So Ryu dies mm -hmm. and Iron Man comes in. What I can do is use my Soul Stone and Ryu will come back to life. You can see he's got like 25% life there. Right. And then when I do special moves or attacks, they both do the same thing. So I can spike him down to the ground and then Ryu is down Hey, there. didn't uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken have something like this? Yeah, Pandora mode. Would like they would come and just auto attack with you? And oh, stuff? that was a uh, cross assault. I don't remember what that or was. Tag just... crush or <laughs> all, <laughs> the, <laughs> all the names <laughs> in that game were so like yeah. confusing, right? Tag assault crush, right. uh, Pandora but, effect yes. attack gem. This uh, soul stone activation though, it actually brings your character back to life. It's not like yeah. just for that mode uh, storm duration. No, they're afterwards, back. they're back. Yeah. And then you can use the soul stone to heal them back up afterwards too. So. And then yeah. let's say that you build up enough life that you live long enough to get another activation. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think there's a lot of potential with this stone for sure. This is a this is this is a crazy one. Yeah, so that is the soul stone. Uh, we'll go next to mind stone. Uh, mind, stone mind stone is a very close range. Mind stone. And then afterwards, they get up in a dizzy state, try to move around. So yeah, you get up mind in a dizzy stone. state after you get hit by this. And I can do a combo. It does have heavier scaling than a normal combo. And the range is pretty short. You can see the startup's pretty long also. It takes a while before it gets out there. Uh, so that's what the Mind Stone does. Now this gives characters without a traditional command throw mix up the ability to use the mix. So like if I'm Iron Man, I have these cool flight mix ups and everything, right? Mm -hmm. But let's say you're Ryu and you're like, man, all I have is this, this overhead and this low and he's just gonna stand block all day. So like you just use your Mind Stone and you can pick it up and get a combo after it. Yeah, that seems pretty good, but it's like, not it's not as uh, straightforward as all the other ones that we've seen so far, right? Right, definitely not. Um, I wish he had an air dash. You can grab me out of the air with it. Yeah, hit some air. It's a little slow though. Yeah, it's super slow. Yeah, I feel like you got lucky with that. It's like so hard to do. <laughs> Come here. All right, stop. Just a uh, neutral jump. Oh my gosh, there it's so yeah, small. It's so hard. That's the thing, when you grab it first, it's like, how did you do that? I didn't know that was possible. It's such a small hitbox. Uh, yeah, so that's Mind Stone. Activation for Mind Stone builds you meter, so I should remove my meter. And then do this again. Say I'm at one meter. So you can see, it just comes up over time. Wow, that's super fast. So it's like, I can just do stuff like my hyper moves over and over, and then I'll keep building meters, so I just do another hyper move. And yeah, it's a, it's a good way to build it up. So if you have a character that benefits with a lot of bar, like let's say you play Mega Man, he has power, or X, he has power up move, or if you play Arthur, he has power up move, stuff like that is good. Uh, so yeah, that's the, um, the uh, mindset. Put my meter back up. Uh, time stone, I think this is the last one, right? Space stone is that, but yeah. Uh, time stone is also pretty simple to use. It's teleport, time stone, time stone, time stone, and uh, during the teleport you can't actually be hit. So time stone's ready, but there is recovery at the end. So time stone into block. Yeah. So there is recovery at the end of it. It's not like it's free. It's not a long recovery, but it's long enough that you can get punished. Uh, you can also do it in the air. And you can do it multiple times in the air. And if your character has light, let's say you're playing Iron Man. So I'm playing Iron Man, I can do Time Stone, Time Stone, I can fly, Time Stone, Time Stone, Time Stone, I can just fly around the screen and be super evasive. Wow, that's so crazy. And putting flying is hard, huh? No, it's confusing which side I'm on after the Time Stone. <laughs> so the Time Stone also has really practical applications. Uh, let's say, you know, in the time corner stone. you normally can't go through people with the time stone, you can't. So just crush, just down back. So if I time stone through and tag, Ryu runs in from the front. That's, tagging is a little weird like that about yeah. that. So try to block Ryu, and all of a sudden Iron Man runs in from behind you. So it's like yeah, a really interesting mix up. I can even do it in the air, and he'll come down, come out on the ground. That so. one seems way more confusing for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> I guess in general it's pretty just darn confusing. Yeah, it, it is very ambiguous. You can spike them down the ground, time stone. And you don't know what's oh, that one's up. messed up in the yeah. corner. And it will follow them, so uh, don't get hit right here. After I knock you down here, just uh, hold it. So it will follow you if you delay it. So it's one of those things where it tracks onto you. So you can use it for stuff like that. Um, so that is the time stone use, the, the surge. Uh, the storm, it's like custom combo from old 
uh, games where you can chain moves into each other, right? So I'm just doing my heavy punch over and over and over. Basically reducing the cover frames. Yeah. Attack. It also works on special moves. So if I'm Ryu and I have fast spells, I can just start. Wait, what? That's so sick. I don't know, is DP recovery fast? No. <laughs> he DP'd a projectile? He DP'd to a uh, fireball? <laughs> that'd be oh, that'd nuts. Be <laughs> oh, actually, I DP into like that. Yeah, I'm not sure. But yeah, so oh. it allows you to do That's uh, an moves interesting over and over. Just, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think of what else recovers like that. You can uh, start a bunch of really fast. Oh, uh, like Morgan Soul Fist. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Just yeah, like projectiles. Yeah. And you can always tag them, right? So if I have power, I can just start throwing. And then, all right, well, now there's like five fireballs, <laughs> and I'm just air dashing around, and yeah, it's, it's effective. Sure. Let's <laughs> stop that. So that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sick. So that's the time stone. Uh, next stone, space stone. Space. This is my favorite looking stone. Yeah, I, look, I like, I'm a blue, big fan of blue, so I like it. Space stone pulls your opponent's towards you. So this is really useful uh, in a lot of ways. So let's say I'm playing a character like Ryu, and I'm struggling to get in. I can pull you towards me, and that allows me to move in. But I can also do stuff like pull you towards Ryu, tag into Iron Man, and jump over for a mix-up. So I can, I can also pull you in and then you know go for something like that if Ryu has an air dash or something. So yeah, pull you in, pull you in, and then with Iron Man, do something like that. Like, and who knows what side you're going to end up on, right? Because I have an action. I'm well, really good at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah a lot, you're really good at hitting lots of buttons on your stick I tried, at once. I try to activate and tag, and that's what happened. You gotta plink it, man. Come on. Alright, so, yeah. Uh, that, yeah, that's that's a good example of what the space stone could do. The activation, you just saw, puts them in a box. Uh, try to do a magic series and launch me and do a combo. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> yeah, you're stuck in the box. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't fight back, however. If I run up and I'm trying to hit Rip, you know, he can still hit me back, right, with other stuff, right? It's not like I can just run up for free okay. and do stuff. You can still shoot fireballs at me, you can do super moves, all that kind of stuff is still available to you. But it puts you in a box and kind of forces you to deal with what I'm going to do. Like. So, it's, it's not foolproof, but it's effective. And, uh... What if you combo me? Does it knock me out of the box? No, here's what happens. Oh, the box moved! Only yeah, only when I'm hitting you, the box will move. What if does it does it allow for better combos if like you're stuck in the box? Actually, that's a great question. I'm honestly not sure. But what most people do with the space stone right now is to prevent someone like you from fighting back. Right, and then I can get it mixed up off right. it. Right. So there's a lot of people that have setups that allow you to put heavy blocks on and then just do stuff like that. Got it. So that's um. Yeah, that's a good way to use the, the space stone, that's for sure. It's definitely effective, and it lasts a long time. That's so cute. So, yeah, try, try activating space stone and just doing the ground bounce off it. Yeah, normal problem. Yeah. But you can't be moved, or like, you can't move out of it, so it's a really interesting scenario. I wonder what happens if I wall bounce you mid screen if you go flying forward with the box. Uh, so if I <laughs> yeah. he's like kicking his big old box. Yeah, that was a wall. That's a wall bounce. Because it's at the edge. Of, because it's at the edge of the screen, you're not getting pulled anywhere. Oh, that's crazy. So you don't go anywhere. Huh, this probably is the last thing you do with that. Yeah, probably. Think, like, what if not? You probably think. I mean. I think that you would normally do in a corner. Should also work with it. Off, off a wall bounce, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Seems interesting. There's probably a lot of applications, but that's what all the stones do. Hmm. Yeah, it's all the stones. And also, when you activate a stone... I can win this! Oh, I can't. Free, uh, I also can't tag here. You get a free level 3, though. What do you mean? So when you activate a stone, so, if you hit the activation again, it costs you no meter to go Really? Yeah. With this stone or also? Any stone. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Uh, it does like, I think the same amount of damage too. So the idea is while your stone is ticking down, you have free Do it at three the attempt. end. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Now that I think about it, I didn't know that. Yeah. So that's one thing that I do. <laughs> that's good to know. Yeah, it's good to know. Uh,
throw the throw tags. I mean, we, we, the throw yeah, throw, just, throwing is forward and heavy punch, or backwards and heavy punch, depending on the direction you throw it. And for me to attack it, it's, it's uh, also heavy yeah. punch. Yeah. That's not the heavy. That's that's the that's the speed fighter. Heavy. Yeah, medium punch. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, it's, it's really fast. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm gonna neutral jump and then throw you. Okay. Ah! Yeah. And, and you also throw breaks the air. Yeah. So I'll jump and throw you. So okay. start neutral jumping. Yeah, yeah, so that's what it looks like. Uh, you break with the same button. Mm -hmm. uh, the only other thing that we should probably talk about is counter switching, uh, which Wait, is uh, it's like a combo breaker mechanic, sort of, or burst. So I'm going to launch Iron Man up in the air. Okay. And while I'm hitting Iron Man, uh, after I hit him, hold forward and hit the tag button. Hold the tag button. Oh, oh yeah, you did it, but yeah, that's exactly I hold it. the tag button. Hold the, the tag button. So, that allows you to break out of a combo. It costs two meters, two of your meters, uh -huh. but you'll bring in your other character. Now, keep in mind, that doesn't make necessarily Ryu safe uh, or Iron Man safe. If I do, if I read that you're going to do a tag or something like that, I could do my own tag and then bring him in. Whoa, that was crazy. I was yeah. trying to actually do my hyper and just super you above me. Ah, yeah. I mean, so you could do stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so, if I bring in Ryu, tag out. So try to do what you're just gonna do. I can tag into Iron Man and he'll run in and then you'll be on the ground shooting this up yeah. there. So it's like it's like a little sort of a crazy mind game. Yeah, it's a crazy mind game back and forth. Especially if I have someone in the corner. It's very hard sometimes to because I can just shoot my beam down. Oh god. Who got hit? <laughs> I don't know. I hit Ryu and yeah. Iron Man survived. Yeah, okay. so it's like one of those things where there's a really interesting mix up of mine. And that's game. called a counter switch. Yeah. It's done by holding the tag button and forward? Yes. Or just hold the tag button? Just hold the tag button. No, no direction necessary. Yeah, so you can still be hit while you're doing it. Your character is still in a recovery state. And if you're not careful, both of your characters can get hit. Right? So if I. Happy birthday! Yeah, they oh, boy. The oh, and I did it again! Why else did we get beat up? I think it's because Iron Man recovered. Yeah, it's fancy. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah. The most despicable, dangerous man on the planet. Yeah, counter switch costs two bars. Yeah, yeah we thought we talked about that at the start. There it is. <laughs> Saved your boy. Yeah, get him out of there. Yeah, and uh, that's one thing is that getting hit by combos in this game builds you a lot of bars. So doing stuff like that is generally uh, not a bad idea. And then do all characters have level 3 hyper? I think pretty much all of them. Almost everybody I've played so far has. Ryu has Shinjo. Look at the damage. With the power stone, that thing does like 80%. Yeah, if you do a power stone combo, you're, you're pretty much killing a character. Yeah, we, we did a while on all the basics. I think we're the only stream to even teach people a little bit about the game so far. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every stream I've turned into, it's been two people in verses, and they're just like, <laughs> And they're like, man, it's so uh, sick and creative. Yeah, it's creative. Look at my function. And, yeah, look at me. Look at how sick and creative I am, right? So thanks very much for allowing us to teach you guys a little bit about the game. I'll post this on YouTube later. Uh, I'll have uh, my, my fellow there upload this to YouTube so you guys can check it out. Who's your fellow? Uh, Magic Moss. He does an excellent job. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to get this on YouTube for you guys in case you are curious. Uh, and um, there, Steve and I did some content with Cross Counter that's going to come out pretty soon. And some more basic stuff that if you guys want to see it. So yeah, we'll do a quick recap. Okay. Uh, really fast. Yeah, I got this. All right. I know how to do this. Uh, I'm a professional. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't take me that long. No problem. Yeah. So let's go. All right, quick recap. So, uh, most important thing in Marvel is probably going to be to move around, right? You can do that with your punch buttons. That's how you move around the screen. That's a very important thing. There's all kinds of mobility options. So it's a high flyer. This game's fast kind of all over the place. There's four attack buttons. Light punch, light kick, heavy punch, heavy kick, right? Those are super important. You're gonna use your special moves and other attacks to tag into your characters and then do combos off them, right? That's a really important thing. Almost as important to thank the people that uh, support your channel like Chicano Soul. So besides that, that's how you do it, right? Attack buttons, movement, 
Great, every character has different special moves. They usually cost one bar or three bars. Most of the time, they're also tag cancelable and you can do combos as well. So if I do something like that, then I can do a combo with Iron Man if I was good at the video game. There's six different stones of the game. They all have activations that you can use and those are called surges. And then they have power-up modes where you become super powerful. These are called storms. You can tell by the storm. Yes, the storm in the background, it matches the color of the stone that you're playing. That's Marvel's Capcom Infinite. Alright, let's play a game. 